For the last few Monday Mysteries, we have been focused on Olympic National Park in the state of Washington. Today, we're going to stay in the state of Washington. However, we're going to go 285 miles southwest of Olympic National Park to a very odd graveyard. A graveyard with a somewhat sad and spooky past that still holds a lot of mystery to this day. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers on this channel. Without your support, we could not do what we do, especially since we have been struggling with shadow banning lately. So I greatly, greatly appreciate you all. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today on Mystery Monday we are going to be talking about the baby graves. United States won its independence from the monarchy of Great Britain in the late 1700s, there was still a lot left of this continent to be discovered by the European colonists and explorers. Now, granted, at this point in my life, I have a lot of doubts about the actual history they've given us of this continent, but as of right now, this is what we know. The new founded country of the United States of America was about to go west. We know that the Louisiana Purchase happened in the early 1800s. If that is something you are interested in, I will place our New Orleans playlist down in the description box below. But this Louisiana Purchase granted a lot of land to the United States. This is where we start getting stories of the wild, wild west, where there were really no rules, and the law was ruled by those who basically were the strongest. In 1818, Great Britain and the USA agreed to joint occupancy of the area west of the Continental Divide. The area west of the Continental Divide provided work in the form of trading posts, railroads, and steamboat companies. This gave way to a lot of homesteading for all of the colonists from the United States who came west, as well as people coming over from Asia. The state of Washington was granted to statehood in 1899. It became the 42nd state in the United States. One of these homesteaders was a man by the name of William Dennis. Now, William Dennis owned land right outside of the hills of Kennewick. Kennewick is now near Benton City and is located in Benton County. These hills are also known as Horse Heaven Hills. This homesteader, William Dennis, had this garden, this plot of land that was located at a crossroad of a bunch of different roads established by the other homesteaders in the area. Now, after William Dennis tragically lost his life, the legend goes that this garden that he owned became a graveyard. This was a graveyard for the homesteaders in the area. However, there was one particular area of the graveyard that seems to be just for babies. Now granted, all of these graves are over a hundred years old, and I know, I know, we know that back in these times it was pretty common, unfortunately, for children to lose their lives young. It was also pretty common for women to lose their lives in the process of childbirth, a far cry from what happens today in most cases with pregnancies. But if you're like me, I, I tend to question everything nowadays, especially since this area of Horse Heaven Hills, or as it's traditionally called, Horse Heaven Hills Cemetery, is still pretty desolate. In fact, from what I understand, if you're, if you're driving down to the baby graves, you're going to be still riding on these back roads that look like they still exist from the homesteading times. Now, the particular area that holds the baby graves is marked off by a white picket 
fence. If you go into the graveyard, you will notice that there are a lot of headstones missing, whether this was from vandalization or something else. People are not exactly sure how many bodies are resting in this particular cemetery. Now, one of the spooky things about this white picket fence, according to local legend, is that the white picket fence has a very strange glow at night. Now, skeptics will say, oh, it's just because it's white, but I'm telling you, there's nothing else out there to give it this particular glow. Another common occurrence at the baby graves, particularly at night, according again to local legend, is that you will hear the babies often crying and looking for their mommies. This is so gut-wrenching to me, and apparently now people do tend to leave toys and knickknacks on the graves for these children. But the wildest story of all, in my opinion, around this baby grave is the story of the groundskeeper in the shack. Now, multiple, multiple, multiple people have written multiple, multiple, multiple blogs, shot multiple videos about this entity. And I do say entity because in the daytime, if you were to go to Baby Graves Cemetery, there's no shack. I mean, there's literally, from what I can see, nothing out there but this little white picket fence around this graveyard. However, if you allegedly were to go by the graveyard at night, you would see this shack near the property. Now, there again is a groundskeeper that lives in this shack. And according to all these eyewitness testimonies of people who've experienced this, the groundskeeper will run out of the shack with a baseball bat to get you off of the property and away from the graves. In fact, one of the blogs I read when I was researching the story claimed that this entity literally beat their car. They were got out of the car to go and like scavenge the graveyard at night and then this groundskeeper came out with the bat, chased them back to their car and literally started hitting their car as they had to back up and drive backwards down the dirt road to get out of the area. And I know some people might think, oh, this is just some type of old wives tale. This, this is a legend because obviously again, if you go there in the daytime, there's no freaking shack. There's nothing out there. But it's so weird to me that so many people have given this same testimony. In fact, the evening shenanigans of this graveyard have now become somewhat illegal. You can only now visit the graveyard legally during the day. I know that means that there are probably people that still go out at night. I might be tempted myself to still go out at night just to see what I can see, but I will warn you that this place is now monitored by actual security, so buyer beware, go at your own risk. But did they do this? Did they make this kind of law that you couldn't go out there at night because of all the paranormal phenomenon that happens? Is there something that they're like hiding about this area of Washington? We know again that the UN became very interested in Olympic National Park and the UN doesn't have interest in places without reason. And even though this cemetery is 285 miles away from Olympic National Park, I still kind of wonder if there's not some sort of a portal here or something going on in this area that would cause this phenomenon to happen. And maybe, just maybe, the powers that be don't want us knowing what that is. Or is it sincerely just the county trying to keep party goers out of the graveyard? We know kids can be irresponsible, and I can imagine that for teenagers or, you know, young adults in their early 20s, it's probably shits and giggles to grab some beer and go out to this haunted area. But like I said, nowadays I think most people do respect the lives that were lost and do have a fair amount of respect for the area because they do leave the toys for the children. And I know from all the accounts of people saying they heard the babies crying, it was really, really gut-wrenching. Most human beings would feel that empathy and that compassion regardless of whether the lives were lost over a hundred years ago or today. So I don't know you guys, let me know your opinions down in the comment section below. Have you been to Baby Graves Cemetery? Are you from Washington State? Are you familiar with this story? If so, I wanna hear your perspective. 
We do here in Atlanta, in the suburbs of Atlanta, in an area called Mapleton, have a witch's graveyard. I've actually been to that witch's graveyard, and it, it sounds a lot like the Baby Graves Cemetery. The witch's graveyard, however, here in Atlanta is not marked on a map. You have to know someone who knows someone who knows where it is. And a lot of strange phenomenon happens there. Allegedly, all of the people that uh, are buried there were women from the colonist times that were once again accused of being witches, kind of like up in Salem. And so crazy stuff happens there at night. And now if you go out there at night, the cops will show up. So these graveyards that have these mysterious histories where they're not super famous, they're kind of off the beaten path, definitely make me scratch my head and wonder like what is actually there? What is really going on in these areas? Again, I would love your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. This is what this channel is for. It's a, it's a channel for us to explore these things in our world and talk about it and see what we can come up with together. All right, you guys, Magdalene Series Part 5C will be dropping tomorrow. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful start to a wonderful, wonderful week. It's already warm again here in Atlanta, Georgia, but as they say, the month of March comes in like a lion and out like a lamb. So I am hoping for all of our sakes that the end of March will be one that is full of wonderful surprises. So hold your head up high and know that the best is truly yet to come.